Hey everyone, today we're going to be having a look at a Gunnam Moore Diamond. This is from the UK range. It's an 808, let's take a look. Okay, so what we've got today is a bat that I ordered in from England. Uh, thanks very much to Talent Cricket over in the UK. So this is the new Ben Stokes chosen bat for this season, which is the Diamond. Which is a very traditional shape. I've heard it called not unlike the old flare. But I'm pretty sure the flare had some sort of concaving. This is a very traditional convex spine with no wood taken out whatsoever all the way down the blade. And the thing that's unusual about it, it's got a centimetre and a half taken off. So it's a 540 blade length, which you'll see written right there on the back. Slightly longer handle, but it compensates for that by being really thick and a semi-oval right here at the bottom so you can grip it a bit higher up without feeling a little bit lost and wanting to choke the bottom of it. So typical Gun and Moore style handle, very good quality. There's no way you can get any twist out of that handle. So very thick through the shoulders. Comes in at 16 mil there. You can see down the back of the bat, no concaving and you can also see this massive amount of bow that they've put in it down the bottom. It's quite significant really. It looks to be about at least a centimetre of bow down in a mid to mid-low position curving out so you can really hit those balls over the top. Now the edge size isn't that big and that's because they've left all that wood here in this area rather than carrying it over. The other thing is the atmospheric moisture in the air tends to make it a little bit difficult for them to maintain bigger sizes unless they get really low density cleft. This bat is not supposed to be a really big bat. I think the maximum they get to is about 62 millimetres. Um, and the edge size is optimal on this one. It's 34, but it only gets to 60 millimetres on the top, which peaks in a mid-high position. You can see that. Mid-low up to high is your hitting area. It's not really designed to be choking the toe down here, but no bat should be. It's got the toe tech edges knocked in, the facing put underneath the stickers. Um, it was described recently on Custom Bats I was reading. They did a um, visit of Gunner Moore and the reason they put the stickers over the top is not to make life hard for people who refurb them. It's just purely because they take so much pride in their brand. If they put the scuff tape over the stickers you would get this bubbling. So they left it with a sticker over the scuff. So that's why you have it like that. This has got a blue and white theme. You can see there, Gun and Moore. Nice texturing. It's got a light blue to white look. Diamond. And down the bottom, Ben Stokes 55. And made by England's best. It maintains the same terrain grip as the bats from last season which would be the bats from this season, first time in Australia. I actually like it. And I bought this one and I specified to them, could you make sure it's all sap wood? And I actually wanted about 28. Now, as it's come, it's arrived just on 210. So before we tap it up, we'll have a look at the grain structure. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven grains across the face. Very straight. Going almost through the bat and straight through the back of the bat as well. So this is an 808. I know there can be much grainier ones but normally they have heartwood in them so generally uh, 8 grains would have made this a 909. This has got 7 grains. Does it make a difference to performance? I don't think so. Particularly the way they press bats. So we'll tap it up now. And you can hear it going in that low position. It's actually got a very nice sound to it. It's deep. So it's starting to go just under the stickers. It needs a play in. Definitely going well in that mid position. Continuing into mid-low. Good ping there. 
and due to that bow, it actually feels quite good down there. And the thing I do like about it, it's not really soft down at the toe. They do a really good press down at the toe. So, despite being only seven grains, it hasn't got that really high pitched, um, overpressed sound to it. It's, it's actually quite a nice pingy bat. And it pings quite well off centre, as you can see there. So I'm hitting off centre there, and I'm getting good ping on both sides, particularly when I'm middle. Of it. So that needs a little bit of uh, a little bit more knocking in, probably edges that area of the toe, and then you could just start playing that in. So we'll turn the camera around and we'll bounce some balls on it. Okay, so as usual. Uh, we'll start with the old four piece. And you can hear that sort of thud to it. Not really down low, needs some knocking in. Up high, sounding good. It really needs to play in these bats. I think that Gun and Moor are one of those bats where you really need to give it some love in the nets. Let it face balls, and the more time you give it before you take it out, play the new ball, the better and better they get. So that's the four piece. Now I did talk about back speed. So I feel like this has got a really nice swing on it. Uh, even though I'm holding it in a traditional short handle position on the handle, I'm getting good swing and it feels like a 2.9, maybe a bit lighter, even though it's 2.10. Alright, I'll bounce the jukes on it. And it goes pretty well. You hit anywhere from here to here. So, I can only imagine that that, in combination with a decent swing, is going to really bully bowlers. Just bring in the gate. Obviously, we've got about 7mm sacrifice at the top, but you can just see how full that profile is when I drop that onto it. You can see how that's really got a convex shape. Give it a little bit more on one side, opens up on the other. And so be it. So that's your traditional style profile and a nice full blade and it actually picks up nice because of that short blade concept. Sometimes with these full bats they can actually pick up their weight or heavier. That's not the case with this bat. So I like it. It's definitely having held a Shane Watson edition flare um, I know that the player who owned that put heaps and heaps of rubbers on the back to create a counterweight because it just felt pretty heavy being so full. Whereas this bat doesn't really need that assistance. I don't even think you'd need to put an extra grip on it. And you can see there the three cork insets. So well done to Gun and Moore. This is what they call the five star edition bat. And with all five star edition bats, the bat maker grades it somewhere in between on the balance of pickup and power and they've put a three right in the middle so it's a good compromise between pickup and power nice bow nice looking grains no blemishes on the front and going to more qualify that as a grade premium grade two whereas every other bat maker will tell you that a minimum of six grains perfectly even and straight like this is grade one. So this is definitely a grade one bat. So well done to Gunner Moore. Really like that shape. The Gunner Moore Diamond. <laughs> <laughs>